Hey guys, Scott here with the third video in our free system building training. So in the first video to recap, we had an overview of the various different types of trading systems you can build. Second video, we looked at edges, how to test for edges. Now this third video, we're going to look at back tests, exits and optimization. So right now, we're at the situation where you've already found something that's an edge, you've tested with scatter plots to make certain that it's an edge, you know exactly what sort of system you're going to be building because you've figured out which one suits you best. And we're ready to start the work of fleshing out our system. So here's how I go about it. Now at the start I'll say that there's one type of system that is totally different than all the others and that's mean reversion systems. If you're doing, if you're building a mean reversion system the whole exit process is completely different mainly because mean reversion systems in general either don't use stops and they use ver and they use targets that don't trail stops it's easier but it's totally different we're going to look at how to start prototyping your trading system how to start doing some preliminary testing so you know what sort of exit is going to be optimal and then how to fill in the blanks and how to optimize it after that okay the starting point is what we call a, a, a sensible maximum favorable excursion analysis. So I'll say that again. It's maximum favorable excursion is the furthest point that your that your trade gets to. Now we measure in R. So for example, here's your entry price. You're going long. Here is your stop loss. That distance between them is R. What you want to do is take a whole heap of trades, as many as you can be bothered doing, um, about 50 is a nice number to start with, at least. You're going to take every trade and you're going to put in a spreadsheet how many R did it make before it, before it fell back. So if a trade makes 2R and then falls back to lose money, you call that a 2R. If a trade makes 3R, falls back to a half an R and then goes back up to 5R, we would say that being sensible, you would never hold that trade from 3R all the way down to a half an R. So we would call that 3R. So, so what we're trying to do is be sensible and say that, that in any reasonably chosen exit methodology, are we still going to be in this trade? So if a trade goes in a straight line from entry up to 10R and then falls down, that's perfect. There's no making an exit algo for that is very, very simple. But if a trade goes up, it wiggles, lots of times that the tr trades do this at the start, and if you set your stop wrong or, or, or trail your stop wrong, you're going to have an unlucky stop out, which is, which is emotionally very unsatisfying. If you get whipsawed out of a trade and then that trade goes, goes on to make a big winner, it really, really hurts. All right, the very first thing that we're going to do is what we call a sensible maximum favorable excursion analysis. It's a big mouthful, but what we are talking about is what is the furthest point that your trade got to in profit measured in R and being sensible. So by, by being sensible, we mean that if a sensible person would have held through a retracement, we'd, we'd pretend that we're still in the trade. But if a, if a sensible person wouldn't have held through a retracement, then then you don't count that. So an example of a sensible uh, a sensible retracement, let's say you're in a trade, you start here, it goes up, makes 3R, pulls back to 1R, and then goes on to make 5R. That's a pretty reasonable thing to stay in that trade, so you would count that as a 5R. If something goes to 3R, goes back down to 0, and then goes on to make 5R, you would say no one's sensible would have held a trade from 3R in profit all the way back to zero. So we're being so we're being sensible about this. So the first thing that you do is a maximum favorable excursion analysis. Now what you're looking for you're gonna and then you're gonna plot it as a histogram using Google Sheets or, or Excel. You're gonna see something like this with a histogram. And you're going to see all of your winning trades, there's a certain um, uh, there'll be a threshold that all of your winning trades will be. In almost every valid system, what you see is that if you're a winner, you get at least one R or at least one and a half R. Or, so the first thing that you're looking for is that initial shelf. And we're going to come back to this later. Now, the next thing that you're looking for is any flat spots in your histogram curve and we're going to come we're going to come back to that later but it's important and the third thing that we're going to look for is is there a point 
where there's no more winners. So if all of your winners are one hours, two hours, three hours, one hours, two hours, three hours, one hours, two hours, three hours, there's absolutely no point in trying to trail a stop to catch a 10 hour winner, is there? So what we're doing here is we're, is we're getting enough data to get an idea of how our system behaves. And we're going to try to, to optimize for the most common exits. For, for, the, for the most common situations. So if we have a, if we have a bunch of 5R winners, we're going to try and catch those. If we have a system where we have a lot of 1R winners and the occasional 10R winner, we have to be a lot more careful. So it's a completely different situation. Okay, so the first step is our mass com, maximum favorable excursion analysis on a spreadsheet. Okay, the next thing that you want to test is make your best guess about an average winner. As a rule of thumb, the, the exits that are worth testing are either 1.2R, 1.5R, 2R, 2.5R. Those are generally good exits to test for most systems. Now, you don't need to test all of them, but what I suggest you do is pick the ones that are your best guesses for the average winning trade. So if we're looking at if we're looking at a system, what we want to do is reverse engineer from what we think our win rate is going to be on the setup, and then how big a how big the winners have to be in comparison to the losers. So if we have a 50-50 win rate and our losers are one R and then our winners need to be you know a lot bigger than one R to make a viable system. So in, in that situation I would be testing probably one and a half R and two R limit exits. Now what we want to do at this stage is we've already done the scatter plot so we know we're dealing with an edge. We want to just do a quick test and, and usually you just spend a couple of days doing it um, with pen and paper and the way you do it is not be too fussy with, with getting out calculators and things unless it's really line ball. You just look at the charts and you go, okay, that looks like about, that looks like it made 2R, that looks like it made 2R, that def definitely didn't make 2R. And, and so you fill out a little spreadsheet with how many R you made at different limit exits. Now those limit exits are going to be uh, uh, terrible compared to a properly optimized system. But what that gives you is it gives us it gives us a baseline. So it gives us a baseline for the crappiest exit algo that still works. Where are we at? So we can so we can log how much improvement we've made in the later stages. One of the real secrets of exits is that any reasonably chosen exit methodology will give you roughly the same amount of, of R in profit. What varies a lot is the distribution of those winners. If you bank profits early, you get a you get a uh, you get a much different distribution of winners than than if you're trying to hold for, for winners later. So, one of the things we can tell at this stage is our, we're always looking to disprove our own hypothesis. So our hypothesis is that whatever setup we've got, whatever entry technique is an edge, and we're always looking to disprove that because we're acting like scientists. You don't absolutely have to do this, but I generally do because it's a quick way of prototyping systems. It's a quick way of, of roughly guessing, is has the system got an expectancy that I can live with? So I've got one here that I've done, and I, t I tried an exit at 1R, an exit at 1.2R, an exit at 1.5R, an exit of 2R. So an exit of 2R is twice the distance from your entry to the stop loss. So you make double what you risk. So here, so anyway, I've tested 1, 1.2, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, and 4, and 5. Okay, now, my total, my total expectancy per trade, I got 0 0.17, 0 0.29, 0 0.06, 0 0.11, 0 0.31, 0 0.06, 0 0.19, 0 0.06, and looking for a 5R exit was minus 0.39. So what that tells me is that any sort of randomly chosen exit that wasn't completely stupid gave me a positive result. And now that gives, what that gives me is it gives me a lot of confidence in the system. So the luckiest exit in this instance made 0.31 expectancy, which is fantastic. If you've got a 0.31 expectancy system, you're in the money. You're 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 looking good. And the worst was still profitable, so that's also very good. So at this stage, we've done our MFE analysis, 
we've done our, our, our total art. Now we want to get to the meat and potatoes of actually designing the exit methodology. So, a couple of awesome tricks about exits. The classic mistake in exits is placing your stop too close at the start and, and too wide at the end. So most people want to have a very tight stop so that they maximize their profit. But what happens is the trade takes off and then comes back, whipsaws you out and then runs away without you. It's really, really annoying. It's actually emotionally devastating and whipsaw trades tend to cause later emotional problems in trading. So, so what you want if you're going to properly craft your exit, your exit methodology is to make it quite loose at the start. However, whatever stop distance you think you need, it's probably going to work with a little bit with a little bit less, unless you've got an obvious place that your stop loss is. Now, in the middle stage, in the earlier middle stages of your trade, your trades are, are, are want to whipsaw around a lot. There's one decision that's going to have a huge influence on your profitability, is how soon do you move your stop to break even. So, my definition of a very good trade is a trade that immediately moves in profit and never looks back. Th those trades are emotionally easy, they're, f they're good to be in, it just feels like all I do is win. A trade that's a difficult trade to be in is a trade that makes a little bit of money but not much and falls back down and then, and then goes up a little bit. And those trades are really difficult even if they take off and, and make money at the end. So you need rules to set around that. So as a general proposition, looser is better at the start. There comes a point in every trade where you want to start to be thinking about the exits. Now, if we look at our maximum favorable excursion analysis, you will see that there comes a point where there's very few trades beyond. It's not worth optimizing for those. So if you have a lot of, of maximum favorable excursions around 5R, you might want to start to be tightening your stop around 4R. If you have maximum favorable excursion trades right up to 10R, you probably don't want to be tightening your stops until sort of 7R or so. The vast majority of systems produce winners in the 1 to 3, 3R range. Not that many systems are going to get these outlier winners, which is good because they're actually quite a lot more difficult to optimize for. So the important thing to understand when you're trying to decide how to build your exit methodology is that no one thing can do it all. People think, I'm just, I'm going to trail a stop. I'm going to trail it here and, and they make that sort of thinking or I'm going to have one target or one trail. It produces very ordinary results. We can dramatically improve our results by having a different e exit methodology at the start and a different exit methodology at the end. And if there's one thing that's really going to help you design a superior trading system, it's internalizing that the trade at the start should be able to whipsaw around all at once and then at the end there should be, it sh when it takes off, there should come a point where we're actively tightening our stop trying to get taken out. Okay, now I talk about this a lot in the system building course. Um, I've talked about it before. If you read, if you read some of my other stuff, you'll see that that there's different ways to do it. But in general, the big thing and the other big thing that I want you to take away is that no one type of exit will be optimal. What I generally do is is say, okay, from the start of the trade to 3R, we'll have a given exit methodology. Above 3R or above 4R we change that exit methodology for a, for a much tighter stop. So at the start we want quite a loose stop, maybe it, it doesn't really matter, there's a there's a, a number of different ways to do it, but but the concept matters more than, than the exactness. At the start of your trade you want a very wide stop, then when you hit a point that you've recognized in your maximum favorable excursion analysis, then you want to be running multiple stops and tighten stops. Now, the different types of stops that you might want to run, you might want to run a chandelier stop. You might want to run an indicated stop, like a parabolic SAR stop. You might want to run something like a Bollinger bandwidth turning down stop. You might want to run a trailing spike low stop, and you might want to run all of these stops together above 4R, maximum favorable excursion, to actively be trying to get yourself taken out of the trade. So what we're trying to do here is that in a perfect trade, you're not unhappy that you stopped out, you're like hoping it gets stopped out. Now this is critical because it completely changes the game emotionally on trading. You've got a big winner, 
you're hoping you get stopped out, you're hoping it reverses on you. It just makes it emotionally, dramatically easier to do. We've got our initial stop. We've changed it for the middle part of the, uh, of the trade. It should be quite a wide stop. It doesn't matter how you do it. You could do an indicator stop, like a close below a moving average. But in the middle of the trade, it should be quite wide. And then at the end of the stop, you want to start dramatically tightening up your stop. And the way to do it is to run multiple stops against each other. So we talk about this a lot in the system building course. It just dramatically improves the performance of your systems. Now, at this stage, what do you do? You've got something that is pretty close. So what I suggest you do here at this point is to start manually backtesting. I wouldn't jump to the computer backtesting if you're going to do that at all at this stage. What I do is to get out a spreadsheet and go through a lot of price action. Usually I spend three weeks of my life backtesting a new system manually before, before I then give it to a programmer to make absolutely certain. So what I want to do at that point is I backtest it and I have a strong preference for Excel spreadsheet or pen and paper backtesting because what I believe is that it gives you this down in the weeds feel for your system, how it's performing, that you really can't get from automated backtests. Like when, when, someone, when someone shows me an automated backtest, it's like, okay, that looks good. But when I've gone through every single trade and I've like bar by bar and I'm hoping this one's a winner, oh no, it's a loser. Oh, okay, okay, this is good. And so what? So what you get when you do it manually is you get a really deep intuitive feel of how drawdowns would be manageable, how it would feel to trade that system. Because at the time that you're doing the backtest, you're excited about your new system. So that excitement is a proxy for the strong feelings that you feel when trading. It's not the same, but it's enough to get a little bit of the idea of an idea, would it be tradable? At the point when I've probably spent at least a couple of weeks and up to a month of my life manually backtesting this. What this does is it is it acts like trading practice. If I've done 15 years of backtesting on my system, it feels to me like I've been trading this system for 15 years. So what this does is, is, it, is it dramatically reduces the mistakes that you're going to make when you're betting in your system and you want to make those mistakes now before you start using real money. Okay, so at this point, what have we done? We've done a sensible maximum favorable excursion analysis. We've, we've done some quick prototyping, checking different limit exits. We've crafted our best guess of an exit algorithm and we've manually back tested it. What's left to do? So what's left to do is if you want to do a full computer back test, you can do that. The retail level programs have like Ninja Trader and Multicharts and things like that. They're good for certain types of back testing and not certain not certain not others it's a very complicated topic and there's there's lots of problems with backtesting and that are all that you can work through completely and we discuss it all with the system building course but if you're doing that and you have problems just send me an email because yeah if you're if you're doing full computer backtesting just send me an email tell me which package you're using and I'll tell you some of the common problems that you're probably gonna have to work through okay so at this point what have we done going back right from the start so at this point We've, looked, we've started with our goals and we've worked out which, which type of system is going to suit us, which markets we're going to trade. We've found an edge. We've tested that it's an edge. Prototyped our system and designed an exit algorithm for it. And we've either manually or computer or both tested it all. Now, what's left, your system is done. So at that point, we have to start the working it into production process. Now. It's not as simple as, okay, you've got a million dollars in an account, you've got your, your brand new system, and you just start trading it, 1% R values, $10,000 a, $10, a trade. It's not that simple because when you start trading a new system, you're not going to be that good at it. Uh, and the more complicated the system is, the more, you're, the more time you're going to need to get good. So what we do is we work the system up slowly. So your first trading with your system should be for the smallest possible size you can manage. If you're trading an FX account, you're trading like $50 a trade. You know, if you're, uh, if you're a futures account, you're Johnny One. -on. So you're, you're only trading the smallest one share, two shares, that kind of thing if you're doing stocks. So what we do is we start small until we can prove that we can trade mistake free. So mistakes are the enemy of trading. Mistakes, if there's one thing that will ruin 
a perfectly good trading system, it's mistakes. So as we're designing our system, we ought to keep in mind that it's actually better to trade a simple system that we can trade well than a needlessly complicated system that we keep making mistakes in. Okay, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. In the next video, we're gonna have one more, it's a webinar. It's only gonna be live and we're gonna show me executing my core trend following system, the, the Thor system, uh, I'm gonna show you live. Before that, we're gonna have a little discussion. I'm gonna show you the actual entry pattern, the entry setups. I'm gonna show you exactly how it works and I'll give you a PDF with the exact rules of, uh, of my trend trading system. So that will be next Wednesday, the 14th of March 2018 at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's next Wednesday, the 14th of March, Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m., which is 7 a.m. here in Bangkok. And what I'm going to do then is execute my systems live. I'm going to show you how the record keeping works, how you take screen captures. I'm going to show you how I manage my day. So show you the exact order that I look at the markets, show you the exact setups that I'm looking for. I'm going to show you exactly how I fill in my spreadsheet. So at the end of it, you're going to get a really, really good idea of exactly how much work is involved in executing a trading system. And I can tell you now that my trading systems take between 10 minutes and 30 minutes to execute every day. And that's all. So next Wednesday, hope to see you all there. Thanks very much, guys. Bye.